do you make the filters? I make them filter myself, yeah. At your place, right? Yeah, in my garage. Um, the only thing I don't make is the, um, well, I have to buy the, the polycarbonate in the first place. But I cut them all down myself to shape. And uh, the filters, we've experimented for years. In fact, I'm still experimenting, you know, trying to come up with a better way to do this or that. But we have a very complete set of filters tested by the National Radiation Lab, and they found them to be, to do what they said. That in fact, they're a lot better than I expected they would be. Radiation levels compared to what I was doing if I was using the Gonstead technique on a lateral we were cutting the radiation by 95%. Now, that's a hell of a lot of radiation, you know. So this was um, why I got the support. And um, fellows like Joe Howe, I talked about the uh, radiologist of Los Angeles, they invited me to talk to the uh, Diplomates Conference in San Antonio. And uh, I discussed my filters there. And um, then I said, can I speak frankly? These are all the diplomat in Dakbar. And I said, my only complaint about you guys is that you're brilliant at your job as radiologists, but you spend too much time teaching students about rare pathologies they might see once in a lifetime, and not enough time teaching them about what a normal bone looks like, so that if they see a pathology and they don't know what it is, they can ring you and ask for an opinion. And everybody's looking at the floor and coughing and saying, I never got invited back, but two or three came up, including Russ Howard. He said, John, we needed that. And he said, we're too far up ourselves. And that's exactly what he said. So, um, but radiologists realise that if they're going to do the full spine work, a combination work, you've got to use filters. That's the only way to do it. And luckily, I have what's recognised as the best in the world. And I'm not bragging it is. There are only two other systems in the market, and um, they're not selling much. So we're coming up to the 30th anniversary. Sorry, 30th anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Of the Commission of Inquiry, and I believe that you were involved in that quite a bit. Do you want to just? Well, I was. I was involved a bit um, when I went to see Joe Howe, as I mentioned. I had my calipers with me, and I said to him, "What do you think of these?" He said, "I wish I'd invented them," because he said they're going to be a big help. And I mentioned that we were going to have the Commission of Inquiry coming up, and I was going to have to give the evidence and. I wasn't all that happy about it. I said, would you like to come down and do it? We'll pay you fair. He said, well, you don't need me. He said, there's a chap named Terry Yoakum who's teaching at the Preston Institute in Melbourne. He said, he's my top student. And he said, he will do an excellent job. So as soon as I got back, I rang Brian O'Hagan and Stephen Pallister, who were the two chiropractors in charge of our research. And I said, this is the man. So uh, they brought him over. And... Um, I had met Terry Yoke before because I'd gone over and done a lecture on my filters. And uh, he came over and um, the day he arrived, he had a pile of all the syllabuses of his classes at Princeton Institute, which is now RMIT for those of you here. And um, all the medical people there got a copy. And I was sitting behind Dr. Boyd Wilson, who was the radiologist from the medical profession, who was the chief expert witness against chiropractic. And I was sitting behind him, and um, he was saying to his mate, he said, this guy teaches harder stuff than I ever learned at school. He never asked Terry Yoakum a question the whole time he was in the witness box. And that had a big bearing on the outcome of that commission, because when the radiologist wasn't prepared to stand up and question our expert witness, uh, was saying, well, you guys are doing as good a job as we are. And afterwards, um, I still remember this, um, Boyd Wilson went up to Yoakum and said to him, uh, said, I, you know, I like the way you talked and I like your work. And he had, I can't remember what it was, but some sort of magnifying lens in his hip pocket, uh, Dr. Wilson. And Yoakum said, are you still using one of those? He said, they went out with high button shoes. And uh, the old oh, Boyd Wilson, oh, well, you know, this is what I use. In other words, telling Boyd Wilson, you know, you're not as good as you think you are. Uh, and if I'm allowed to say this, Boyd Wilson, who was our expert witness, was caught stealing trees and plants from Mount Ropehu National Park. He got fined, and this was about six years before the Commission of Inquiry. And um, when they found out he was the expert witness, 
everybody's delving into his past, and somehow Craddock, our lawyer, found out that he'd been found guilty of stealing plants from Mount Igma, of Mount Rapehu. So just as Boyd Wilson went up to give his first evidence, Craddock said to him, uh, don't worry, Dr. Wilson, we won't be asking you any questions about Ruapehu National Park. And he just sort of staggered. So in other words, we know all about you, fella. But um, um, the commission went well. Boyd, uh, sorry, Boyd Wilson, he was, um, he was a nice guy. He was an honest guy as far as he was concerned, but I don't think he'd ever researched chiropractic. And he put his foot in and jumped in a hole several times and was found to be wanting. Um, so can you give us like a, a summary of the findings? Okay, the well, the, uh, can I just put one more thing? This is I consider most important. The subject of referral to a chiropractor came up and Dr. Wilson was asked by Dr. Uh, Craddock, our lawyer, under what circumstances would you refer a patient to a chiropractor for treatment? He said, I would never refer a chiropractor under, to a chiropractor under any circumstances. And um, Craddock said, well, do you know of any cases that were? He said, yes, there was one here in the hut not so long ago. The patient was referred to a chiropractor by his medical doctor for treatment for chest pain, was treated by the chiropractor and subsequently died of a myocardial infarction. Well, there was a lot of sucking of breath from the chiropractor because we hadn't heard of this case. So Dr. Craddock said to Wilson, Dr. Wilson, what was the time frame between the time he was treated and when he suffered the infarction? Well, I don't know the time, but it was soon after. Um, he said, well, you know, we've got to be a little more specific. So Craddock questioned him several times, and finally, after about four or five minutes, he said, what you're saying, Dr. Wilson, is that because this patient was referred to the chiropractor by his medical doctor for treatment by the chiropractor. He died of a myocardial infarction. He said, precisely. So, he said, in fact, this case came to the medical council in Wellington. The report, is, the rec records are there in Wellington. I can go and get them if you wish. So the chairman said, well, that'd be great. This was Friday afternoon. He said, can you leave now and get back before we finish this afternoon? So he disappeared and he came back an hour and a half later. He said, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, the council offices were closed. So the chairman said, I am off for two weeks. We're touring New Zealand with our commissioners to hear submissions. Can you have the evidence back in two weeks' time? So he did. Two weeks later, Wilson got to the witness box. Eichelbaum said, Eichelbaum was the lawyer, Mr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson has... A small statement he'd like to say on the subject of referral. And Wilson said, Mr. Chairman, I made a slight error in my testimony. I was right in saying he was referred to a chiropractor by the medical doctor. I was wrong because he was referred twice. After the first referral, he made an appointment but couldn't keep it because he suffered a myocardial infarction and wound up in Hutt Valley Intensive Care Unit. He was there for six weeks, was released, went back to his medical doctor, who again referred him to the chiropractor for treatment for chest pain, whereupon the patient's wife sued the medical doctor and reported him to the medical council. Um, so, in fact, he never went to the chiropractor. He was never treated by the chiropractor, and he's not dead either. It all just seems a little bit ridiculous, though, doesn't I it? I know. I mean, but that was the evidence he was giving as an expert witness. Now, if that is, he's giving that as an expert witness and he believes it to be true, how many other falsehoods have they given, you know? Well, what about the other